In this last video of today's lecture, I will talk about um, the group by. And group by is an operation you're gonna use quite a lot um, when you're working with um, pandas and it's a really useful thing. So what group by basically does, it's split, apply, combine. So if you're grouping by, and now this image here makes sense, you're splitting the data into multiple groups based on some criterion. Um, so you're breaking up and grouping depend depending on the value of some key. Then for all of those groups, you're applying some function, aggregation, transformation, filtering, and then you're combining the results into a new data structure. Okay, so for example, when what we are applying is the summation aggregation, then this is how it looks like. So we have some key ABC, ABC, and if we're grouping by this key, so we're calling this input dot group by and then as argument key. Then we split into multiple sub data frames, not actual data frames because they're lazy evaluated, but imagine these are the sub data frames. And then on all of these sub data frames, we're applying some aggregation. So something that makes one, one value out of this, so the sum or the product or the mean, whatever. And then we have um, little ones, so the individual ones here, and then we combine these into a, into a resulting data frame. Now we see this is obviously grouped by this key, but we only have once A and once B and once C. And so when we have, for example, um, this array, which we make into a data frame like this, and we're grouping by key, what are we getting? Well, I told you a group by object. Why that? Um, well, because it's lazily evaluated. Um, this is just a more efficient implementation. Um, but we can, for example, loop over these group by elements. And then if we're looping over it, then pandas actually um, does evaluate it. So, but instead of looping over it, for example, we can also um, call this aggregation. So data frame dot group by and then the key and then the aggregation dot sum and then we reset the index to make it look nicer. Let's not do that at first. So this is then uh, the result and because I don't want this key here because I find it annoying, this is how then it prettily looks. And this is basically what we saw here. So this is the exact pendant of what we're seeing in this image. And yes. Um, we can get the data out of this to make a series out of this. So as I said, just as well, we can um, put aggregation functions after the group by, um, but we can also, what we can also do is we can loop over this group by object. So this, if we iterate over it, it will um, provide two things, and that is the key for this current subdata frame and the actual soup data frame or group. So um, it gives, it returns two values, the key and the group, and we can extract the key in our first loop and we extract the group in our second loop. Okay, so what do we need it for? Well, um, take for example, <laughs> our Pokemon data frame. And so if we wanted to check which uh, generation of Pokemon has, um, the highest stats in general. So is does is Pokemon subject to power creep? Are new Pokemon have new Pokemon generally higher stats than old Pokemon? So how do we do this? Well we group by the generation of a Pokemon data frame and then we um well, take the mean of the total stats and then see if that's if that becomes monotonically increasing or at least higher for new episodes uh, generations. So let's do that. Let's uh, create Pokemon equals pd.read csv pokemon.csv. And then, so let's first, are we, yes, I am. And then um, I call it pokemon.group by generation. Then I only want the uh, total stats. And from that, I want the mean. Now this gives me. Well, there is a slight wow, the fourth generation in a real power creep. But yeah, so not too much increasing, but we answered this question using group by. Okay, so now um, methods are all um, that, so for some methods, group by has, uh, are actually implemented for group by, but if they're not implemented for group by themselves, they're simply passed through and called on the groups. 
which is then called dispatch method. So for example, the describe method exists for data frames. And because it exists for data frames, if we're grouping by something, this method, um, this method is going to be dispatched and also works for group by. So all methods that work on data frames work on group by objects. And then they produce uh, this nice way. Um, yeah, another way, what another thing we can do with our Pokemon uh, CSV is, for example, where getting the number of um, Pokemon in each generation by grouping by generation, getting the name, and then counting the number of uniques. So there were 151 in the first generation of Pokemon, 100 in the second, and well, actually, oh, the sixth was really tiny. But yeah. All right, uh, time for an exercise already. So take the given data set that contains a region as well as the population density and write a snippet that takes argument the data frame con containing all the countries and returns a series mapping regions to average population density of its countries by grouping. Okay, I will wait. Doop, doop, eep. Okay, so let's look at our um, data frame again. And now what do we want to do? Well, we want the population density um, by region, mapping regions to average population density. So we want to map two regions. So we want to group by the region and then get the mean, the average of the population density. So countries dot group by region. Now, well, let's look at the means here. Is that correct? So are we doing something correct here? So these look like regions, kind of, so that's good. But we only wanted to take um, the population density means. So let's extract the column pop dot density. Let's do it before we take the mean to save a tiny bit of com computation time. And now this is already what we want. And to make it more pretty, I would uh, name axis none uh, oops the name access none and well let's also sort the values to make it prettier and now we see that asia has the highest population density and north america the lowest which is kind of what we expected all right aggregate filter transform and apply so so far i've told you only about aggregation functions like mean min mean min number unique etc but there's more than that, and that is aggregate, filter, transform, and apply. And now let's look at each of those after each other. First of all, aggregation. So we already use the aggregation functions, mean and so on. However, there's also the function aggregate or ag, which we've seen before, which is the explicit version thereof. So if this here is our data frame, we could, for example, use ag, and then inside the ag function, we can provide strings or functions from NumPy or general functions. And Pandas then automatically applies these on the respective columns. Another useful pattern is to pass a dictionary mapping column names, so old column names, to operations um, to be applied on these columns. So in the next one, we want to, from the column data one, we want the mean, and from the column data two, we want the max. Now this will result in a data frame which is also named, where the columns are also named data one, data two, and we take the mean of data one and the max of data two. And again, don't need to be strings, but can be functions or general lambda functions you created. And since pandas 1.0, there's also the named aggregation, because here we don't have any control over the um, output name. So the output name is simply the input name. And um, this syntax is now supported using named aggregation in the egg function, where the keywords are the output column names and the values are tuples whose first element is the column to select from and the second is the aggregation function. Or we can use pandas.named egg with the fields column and egg function to make it more clear because otherwise it looks kind of weird. Okay, so if this year was our data frame for this, well, first of all, make sure you have actually a new version of pandas and then, so this reads where we want to group by kind and then we want a new column mean height, which takes the height column and takes the mean of that and the new column max height is supposed to take the max of the height and the new column average weight is going to take the mean of the weight. And this works just as well. Okay, 
Next to aggregation functions, we can also use filtering. So a filtering operation allows you to drop data based on the group properties. So if, for example, we wanted to keep all those groups with standard deviations larger than some value, then we can create our filter function, which returns true for those elements. So this here is a vectorized option. No, actually, is it? Um, we can look at that, actually. So um, now it takes the standard deviation of the entire column. So and if we do that here, so now it would keep, well, this is not vectorized, right? This takes the group. So it takes the standard deviation of this A group or this B group or this C group. So this boils down to one value and then checks if that is bigger than four. And if we filter using this filter function, where well, this will keep the group so which this filter function is true. Um, so let's look at actually the filters here. So uh, to see which groups are probably going to be kept. Um, and well, if data two standard deviation is bigger than four, so we'll probably keep these two groups and drop this group. And now let's filter with our filter func, and we see it keeps the groups B and C. Note that the filter function does not, in compar comparison to what we saw before, aggregate. So with salt, does have the shape of the original form, just with certain lines left up. Almost done. Next up, the apply method. So the apply method lets you apply an arbitrary function to group results, and the function takes a data frame and then returns also a data frame or a series or a scalar, but in, to, in comparison to um, aggregation, this doesn't necessarily uh, reduce the number of dimensions of the input. Um, so let's remember our apply from how it works on normal data frames. So this here takes the function which normalizes um, uh, the column of a data frame. So it takes uh, for all elements in our column, it divides by the maximum, so that normalized such that the maximum value is now one, and everything else is normalized accordingly. Okay, and that uh, that apply also works on group by. So let's look at how first. Let's first look at what we, for example, can achieve with this. So this column only deletes my new df, and because otherwise I have to the depends always to this. And now look at what we're doing here. So we create our data frame here, and then what we want to do here is to um, to normalize now the first column by the sum of the second column, okay? So here we normalized the first by the first, and now we want to normalize um, the first by the second. So um, let's look at our data frame. So we want to normalize the A's here by eight, and we want to normalize the B's in this column by zero plus seven, so by seven. And what we would do if we didn't use the apply function would be this ugly loop. So first of all, we group the second column and we take the sum of the second column. So this here is again a group by operation. And then what we would do here is we would loop again over, so we would group by key again. And then we would, group, well, take um, our group, our respective groups, so column A, B, or C, uh, the group A, B, or C at the column data one and divide by the respective sum which we created earlier. And then we make a new data frame out of this. So what I would do here is I would, well, if it already exists, I append my new group to the new data frame. And if it doesn't exist, I um, create this group. I create a new DF by group. So this is a, an example of it's easier to ask for forgiveness and for permission. So if I can append to new DF, that's perfect, then I do so. And so that here is if the uh, new df already exists, and this here is the case if it doesn't exist yet. But it's easier to ask for forgiveness than for permission, so um, no one look before, we don't look if it exists before we leap, um, but we simply leap and then ask for uh, forgiveness. This here is, however, um, not the way to do it, because appending to data frames is really bad style in Python, in Pandas, because it takes a lot of time, and this is not how you would generally work with pandas. This is not what data frames are for. But this is the only way of how we would achieve what we want to normalize the group first column by the sum of the group second column if we wouldn't use the apply function. 
Okay, so this is then I'm printing also new df each time such that you see. So first of all, these here are the sums. We want to normalize the first column for a by eight, for b by seven, and for c by 12. And if we do this, well, we loop over the groups. So for a, this is the result, and then we append b to that, and then we append c to that, so that our end result looks like this. So now the first column is grouped by the sum of the second column. This looks ugly and is ugly. Is there an easier way? Yes, there is, using the apply method. So let's create our function norm by data two. And this here normalizes our column data one by the sum of our column data two for the data frame or for the data frame group by object. And now um, we can simply apply this function on our group by object. And if we do that, the result looks the same as here. So under the hood, something like this is happening, just way more efficient. All right, and then we're almost through. Lastly, we can also specify the split key. So, so far, we always split on the column name, so on this explicit column key here. But this is just one of many options of how you can define groups. So we can, for example, um, group by this list. So this list here simply takes, well, this here is group one, this here is group two, this here is group one, this here is uh, group zero, group one, group zero, group one, group two, and group zero. So this here is the only candidate. So we see that's actually the sum of that. So we can group by a list. Or we can group by a dictionary or series mapping an index to a group. Okay, so for that, we take our standard data frame, but we make the key actually our index here. And now we have a mapping for these indices in a dictionary. So A's are vowels and B's and C's are consonants. Now we can group by this mapping such that now well, A is one group and B and C is the other group. And we can also group by multiple columns. A group, if we group by multiple columns, we can do that. So we can group by mapping and inside the mapping also by key, which then creates a, a hierarchical index in our resulting data frame. All right, that's it for this lecture. Then I really recommend to watch this uh, video from PyCon 2015, which is also about pandas, if you couldn't follow me. And I will see you in the practice and next week.